Hello everyone. I'm back to do another video. Just um it's well, it's November 17th and you know, I'm doing some holiday shows, you probably are too. And this is just a a simple, you know, one I thought I'd show. You know, during the holidays they have these plastic trays and everything. Let me wheel you down just a little bit. There you go. I can kind of see you now. <laughs> anyway, um just a holly leaf bowl. Uh, these things are good sellers too, and they're they're so easy to make, really. Um, so it's just a simple thing I thought I'd show you. Um, I said during the holidays they you can you can buy these plastic bowls at the stores. I buy I bought like I think I bought like ten of them um, because when if I'm doing a show and I want to do platters, um, you know I can quick do ten platters at a time stack them up um, and you know let them dry so I let them dry in here this one here is a little bit smaller than what I usually do but um, yeah so it's a holly, holly leaf bowl and yes these are these are little berries and I'm sure they'll look more like berries when they're painted red <laughs> I'm not gonna say what some people say they look like <laughs> anyway better move Better move forward before I get into trouble. Okay. So, my last video, you probably saw my kitty cats in here, and I was, they, they get, I get so distracted by them. They come in here to play, and then next thing I know, I'm playing with them, and I don't, I don't get any work done. So, anyway, um, I'll show you. So, what I do, I just roll out a slab of clay. Um, this is uh, B Mix five with grog. I'll fire it to cone to I'll biscuit to cone O four. I'll fire it to cone five. And um you won't see the, the finished one here because I've I I don't have any finished yet. I don't have any I don't have any glazed yet and finished. Anyway. Um but I will do a kiln opening probably got my sh my shows in a couple weeks so I have to do a bisque firing probably around Thanksgiving and then I will glaze everything in like two days um, I've got a whole pile of bisque here here's some bowls so I'll do some videos on that too um, and then so I'll probably glaze everything and then probably the week probably the first week of December I'll do a cone opening and then you get to see the finished one and I'll try to remember to take some pictures and put them back on the video so if you see this video after um, December 7th when my show is you'll probably see the finished piece added but anyway I'm not a big production potter so I don't it takes me a while to fill my kiln because I have a big kiln and um, yeah it takes me a while because I I, I also teach um, at a recreation center and so I make stuff there and fire stuff there um, you know so I kind of split my work between two places but anyway enough chit chat right I hope you're all doing well it's been a while since I've done some videos I know um, I've been working on home projects and just you know other stuff going on so I hope this works I rolled this out last night um, I have a slab roller so I rolled it out and then I didn't get back to it and it got kind of hard so I've got hard spots and soft spots but hopefully it'll work so you know this let me do it. move it down a little bit further so you know if, if you watch my videos you know I don't use many patterns I just cut things out freehand so this is what it looks like it they don't have to all be the same they don't have to all be the same size um, look at the platter you buy like this leaf here is actually a little bit small for this platter so I had to add um, just paper towels in there to hold it up that's what that white is in there so think about your platter and the outside of your platter and you can gauge the size of your leaf pattern on that so let me put that aside and get another bowl another platter bowl out here so this is all these are just big cheap platters from um, the dollar store so okay so I cut this out like I said I just freehanded it 
um, cut it out how I wanted it. This is going to be, this side is more of a rough side. So what I do first is I'm going to cornstarch it and I just buy this Argo cornstarch, any cornstarch will do. And I just bought one of these big kind of brushes to brush it on. You don't really need a whole lot. Um, but this will stop it from sticking to your plastic bowl here. And some people use fabric. Um, that's fine. I I I don't I I didn't I don't like the, the fabric because it leaves wrinkles in your clay, and wherever there's a wrinkle, is going to be a weak spot that will possibly crack. So, and the cornstarch will burn off in the kiln when you bisque fire. And then I bought my little stamp. I think a cookie cutter creations on Etsy. Can you see that? I don't know. I bought one that has my full name on it, and I think the cats knocked it on the floor, and it disappeared. So <laughs> I spent an hour yesterday. I came in here to do pottery, and I couldn't find it, and I spent an hour looking for it. So I'm going to have to tear things apart and look for it, but these little kitty cats, um, they get everywhere. I think they're probably playing with it, knocked it on the floor, and Lord knows where, where it ended up. So before I put it in the plaster plastic bowl, I am going to put an indentation down the center. And I'm gonna put oh just just rough this up a little bit down here. And I also went around and smoothed all these edges because once I put it in this bowl, I don't want to have to touch it. I don't want to have to trim it. I don't want to have to do anything to it. And I am going to wait to put the other veins in it until I have it in the bowl and I have my sides because I don't know exactly where I'm going to indent it. Um, so I'm going to pick it up like this. So it creases where that indentation is and just set it in the bowl. Okay, so now is where I'm going to shape it. I'm going to try and do this backwards so you can see it better. So I start at the end here and I crease it right where you drew your um, crease line. And then I'm going to kind of see where these creases can be. So I'm just going to kind of bring this in, kind of take a look at how I want this to set up. And I know I want this creased here, so okay so when you're making these if I was making a normal leaf I would just put it in wavy and leave it go I would draw my lines first my vein lines first put it in here and just um, you just kind of make the thing the size kind of wavy but since I want it to look like a holly leaf the trick to doing that is to crease you want to pinch these outside edges here that's what really helps um, make it look like a holly leaf. See what I'm doing? I'm just pinching it like that. And then pinching this top like that. Okay, so now I'm going to take my sponge and wet it. I'm just going to kind of push this in. Kind of work that in a little bit. And if your clay is soft and it won't stay in, um, you can just use rolled up pieces of newspaper or paper towels. So next week is Thanksgiving here. Um, I guess most people celebrate it in the U.S. Probably across the well, 
I don't know, I guess everybody, I guess most people celebrate Thanksgiving. One of my favorite holidays of the year because of the food. <laughs> I love turkey and gravy and mashed potatoes. My sister-in-law makes this awesome broccoli casserole. Well, that's actually, it's like a, just like a, it's just broccoli with like um, mushroom soup and um, what is that? Oh, some other. Well, she puts a whole bunch of onions in it. You know, there's crispy onions. One of my favorite things. I love all the food, pumpkin pie. I'll eat, I'll eat anything pumpkin. Okay, doesn't look like much yet. The veins really help. So if I know where these are now, I'm going to draw veins up here. And you know, when you're drawing your veins, make sure you don't make them too deep. Because that will create a stress spot for cracks. Okay, so it's not staying up real well. So I got my little basket of paper towels. I just reuse them. At the rate everything's costing nowadays, um, you gotta reuse stuff, don't you? Okay, so I'm gonna Shove that down in there. And I'm gonna. This clay is so weird because it's there's hard spots and soft spots from where I tried to re-moisturize it. Like I said, I rolled it all out, and then I realized my stamp was missing. So then I spent an hour looking for my stamp. By that time, I had to leave for work. I thought, well, the heck with it. And I thought, oh, the clay will stay, you know. I wet the canvas on the slab roller, thinking that would keep my clay from drying out, but it really didn't. And I can see this seam has got some little hairline cracks in here, so... And you don't want your clay, don't cut your clay too thin. This is probably a quarter inch. This new batch of clay I got is not very um, plasticky. It doesn't have much placidity, which means it's not stretchy and um, it, it tends to want to crack more. So some of these you can roll over and make the handle there, but this end is a dry end so I'm not going to do that. I can see it's got some hairline cracks in there. I hope it hope it survives the kiln. If not, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't. But so it's going to have to come up more. It's not looking much like a holly leaf. So the reason I like paper towels other than newspaper is because the paper towels have softer edges and they won't they won't poke and leave marks behind the clay on the back side. Newspaper, um, a lot of times when I make um, something that's hollow on the inside and I use newspaper on the inside to hold the piece um, out so it doesn't collapse. Um, I, I wrinkle the newspaper up and unwrinkle it, wrinkle it and unwrinkle it several times to soften the newspaper. Um, because it is stronger when you're trying to, um, like when I do my pumpkins, I don't know if you see my flat pumpkins or my fish. Um, but yeah, the newspaper will poke through, so. Okay, so just kind of. Like I said, get these pinched because that's what makes it look like your holly leaf. These make great gifts. They're easy to make. Um, you can 
I don't know what other people sell them for. I sell I sell these for like, you know, probably 25 bucks. I definitely, definitely don't want any left over. I got a store. And I only have one more show this year, so. I just, uh, I got kind of burnt out doing them last year. So I don't know how many I'll do next year. I like to just, you know, I haven't restocked my Etsy shop in so long. Because it just takes so long to take all the photographs. and So I'm going to add some detail down here. And that is mainly because I'm a little concerned about it cracking down there. Like I said, this clay is... It must be really newly made. The newer the clay, the less plast stretchiness, placidity. They say it's less plastic. That's what they mean. Um, it doesn't stretch, so you know, cracks easy. Basically, is what the um, the older the clay, really, the better it is. So I'm going to put the vein down here in the middle and I made some of these um, where I work at the recreation center um, and that clay I was using some of the older stuff I think that worked great great um, but this is a, this is a new batch. If you can see what I'm doing here. I hope everybody's doing well and getting ready for the holidays and Right, now I get to make some berries. I just have a chunk of soft clay over here. I'm gonna roll them in the balls, and they're a little, um, probably a little big for you know being realistic. But this. Um, Holly leaf is not realistic, right? It's big, it's huge. And I don't, I don't slip and score these because they're just, well, they're just sitting on there, and that's very tacky. So I'm just going to add a little bit of water to the back, press them in there. I'm going to get my brush. So I'm just going to go along the vein here that I added. And I will glaze this with um, probably Emerod, Lagunas Emerod. Um, I've got, I, I, might, I might use uh, seaweed, Amico seaweed too. I'll have to see what I have. I know I just bought two new jars of Emerod. And I'll probably glaze the balls, not balls, berries, <laughs> berries. <laughs> there are clay balls, right? Um, with, um, this is one of my favorite reds. It's called Mako Cinnabar. It's a beautiful, like a burgundy red. Really nice. The nice thing with the Mako glazes is none of them run. Or I should say they don't run, but they don't really run. They're just very, um, very stable glazes. I can't say I've had any of them run off my piece. So I 
enough. I like that. Um, I'm going to cut that off. I don't like the angle, the angle of that. There we go. Sometimes you're working on something and you just change your mind. Yeah, that looks better, I think. That's my dog Archie wanting to go out. I don't know if you can hear him. Every time I do a video, he wants to go outside. He's, he said he needs a therapist. But he lost his two uh, doggy friends. We had three dogs and we lost two of them. I guess it's been a couple months ago now. That's why we got the two kitty cats. Playing around with this too much, aren't I? Chris, do you let him out? There you go. Well, I think that looks that looks good. It'll look better once it's glazed. You can just kind of manipulate it a little bit. There we go. How's that look? Before I dump it out of the... <laughs> so this is my big holly leaf. Like I said, they make great platters. Um, and they're simple. They're so simple to do. Um, you know, sometimes it's nice to have... If you're selling stuff at an art show, it's nice to have some stuff, um, you know, that you can just sell for a lower price something that's easy to make and you know when you're when you're selling at an art show you got to kind of look at your venue and the kind of um i hate to say bargain shoppers but there's certain venues where people come to buy certain things if you're in an art fair people are willing to spend more money to buy your stuff if you're at a craft fair you know they're, they're looking for more bargains you know they're um like someone was asking me my last show it was a huge i mean it was 400 plus vendors and i did really well it was a it was a it was an awesome show it's called a, a pumpkin festival it's one of my favorite ones and people always say um you know what do you sell the most of and for me I make a lot of everything. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not a production potter. I don't like to make 30 of this or 50 mugs or 50 bowls or I, I don't know. It gets, it just gets too mon too monotonous for me. Um, but what I, I think is more important is I tell them, um, it's not how many do you sell of this or how many do you sell of that? For me, it's price point. Um, at this pumpkin festival, I think my, my price point was probably between, um, probably I'd say 20 and $35. The biggest one being around $25 because most people were buying gifts, you know, for Christmas or for a friend and, and most people don't spend over $25 for a a gift for a friend or you know a gift exchange or something like that so I sold a lot of my stuff that way so for me I when I do a show I kind of go by price point as far as like what type of show it is um, for some reason at church sales your price point usually is a little bit lower <laughs> um, craft fairs a little bit higher art fairs you know obviously is more um, that's because people are, are coming to buy pottery. They're coming to buy art. 
And so you're not going to sell really typical stuff. You're going to sell unique stuff. People like unique. So, oh, I have a friend coming over here. Um, but anyway, it's more about, oh gosh, it's more about price. Well, you can't drink out of there. You see what I've, I've got, uh, a kitty cat oh, here. Yeah. Say hi, Molly. And then I got Millie over here too. I've been bombarded by kitty cats. Now don't walk on these girls. Oh, no, no, no. Poi, 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 poi. Poi, poi. Come here. Sit. You cannot drink out of that. Oh, goodness sakes. My cats, they love, they love the water. Yeah. Yeah. No more drinking out of that, huh? Say hi. Say hi. Oh, here's the other one. Oh, what? Well, you want to come over here, and then you don't want to say hi. All right. Now I'm just talking. Okay. All right. No, you're not getting out of clay. Hey. Hey, I'm walking on stuff. All right. I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving, a wonderful holiday, but I will see you again. I'll be making some more videos, and we'll just try to keep the kitty cats out of, out of them because uh, all my... My slab that I rolled out has little paw prints through it. So it's kind of cute though. But anyway, thanks for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks.